the Feltham Novices Chase is next. Three miles this time, Grade One. The Novices always flying at the top. David Hooley, Damaris Giza, Graham Clutterbuck, Great Sadler, Darren Thompson, Magic Wood, Craig Beckwith, The Phalanx, Joshua Sutherland, and Cloak of Magic, Leon Van Rensburg. Field of six. That's all we've got for this. And away they go. Very short run to the first. And they're all safe here. Head towards the second of the 19. Just all the big guns again in this one. As they get to the second. And they're all safely over that one. We've seen many John Morgan horses today. I hope he's not going to be not entering his horses again because he's really doing a well, a good run at the minute. But anyway, it's Great Sandler is in the lead. The Phalanx is second. Maybe he hasn't got any novices. I don't know. Uh, Magic Word is next. It's always been a bit of an issue, hasn't it, with these novice races. And the fact that they just do seem to be particularly easy for the big stables to win. We need to well, have less of them. Or make some of them handicaps, at least. Not making a bit interesting then, but sometimes it's this same five or six horses racing against each other every week in the three mile novice chase or the two mile novice chase because all the little trainers are putting their novices in the handicaps that they can get into, or the hunters or something. But maybe if some of these novice races were made into handicaps, the middling and less lesser trainers would have a bit of a chance to get into them because. It's a bit of a problem, especially for somebody like me this season. My right horses are now can't get into hunters, and there's absolutely no point running them in these because if I run them in these, they, their handicap mark doesn't go down or they go up. And so I end up having to run two in all of the handicaps, and that makes those fields bigger and that. Much more. Anyway, you know what I mean. It's just a little bit too much geared, I think, at the moment, and that's been for a long time towards the top end. Things like the National Hunt Flat Race and the Novice Races, they're all geared up for the big boys and the little chaps have got no chance, really. So, make a few novices handicaps. Presumably it would be ever so easy to do. They get over the next and make them limited handicaps as well so that the Grade 1 horses can't get in them. Because I, do, I don't know who it was, but I do remember way, way back in SO6 days when Doug, Stu and Ray were doing well, chat show things with people. I did talk to a trainer. I can't remember who it was, though. It was one of the big ones. And they, or it, or it may even have been in the forum, to be honest. Well, they actually said they upload their best horses as novices because there are more grade ones for them to win. If they're novices, than if they're open horses, which obviously doesn't sit well nicely with me because I want things to be realistic. And if you've got a horse that you think can win a gold cup, that is a novice, so you can win a grade one every week. That's what some people were openly admitting. There's nothing wrong with it, it's not against the rules, but it just can make these races a bit boring. I must admit, I never even look at the novice races for my novices unless I can't get them in a handicap first. So, Anyway, back to the race. Great Saddler's in the lead. I'm sure lots of other people do the same as they get to the ditch. They're all safe and with the exception, of course, of the four-year-old hurdlers where you've got no choice. But that does tend to be quite even, really, because people can chuck flat horses in there because if you didn't know it, I'm sure everybody watching this does know it, but Sometimes the best flat hurdlers, well, sometimes the best four-year-old hurdlers are actually flat horses, not jumpers, because the four-year-old can never run over fences anyway. So they're always only ever going to be either running on the flat or on the over hurdles. So try your flat horses over hurdles. If you are a newcomer, which you're not, because they're all people who have been around for years watching this one. Anyway, great saddlers in the lead. Having out jump by the phalanx, then cloak of magic, and magic word. Gap then back to always flying, and then finally Damaris Giza, who you can tell is the one, also without being disrespectful to Great, who's outclassed in this race. The rest of them are all in with a chance, and Damaris Giza should really be in a handicap, but he probably can't find one for him this week. 
and Great Sadler is in the lead. Oh, Cloak of Magic second, the Phalanx is third, then Magic Word is fourth, and then Always Flying is fifth. Great Sadler's kicked on for home then, as they head towards the final four furlongs. Great Sadler going well in the lead. Just got three to get over in the straight. And Cloak of Magic second, and Magic Word, then the Phalanx. And then Always Flying. And Damaris Giesel is somewhere adrift. And his last three come up pretty quick after each other. And Great Sadler jumps it well, but Cloak of Magic and the Phalanx are starting to close. Then Always Flying. And Magic Word as they get over that second last and the leader was slow and now Cloak of Magic is coming to challenge but Great Sadler is fighting back on the flat. They come down to the final fence and this time Great Sadler did jump it well and got away from it well and it's a short running but Cloak of Magic is starting to eat into the lead again. Great Sadler needs that line to come. Here comes Cloak of Magic. Great Sadler hanging on. Cloak of Magic getting closer. Cloak of Magic and Great Sadler flash past the post together. I'm not sure. Like I said last week every single one like it looked like the horse had won in the race, the other one won in the vote in the replay. Let's have a look at the replay. The replay says Great Sadler to me, which is probably what I thought. Let's have a look. Here's a dead heat. There you go. It's a dead heat between Great Sadler and Cloak of Magic, Darren Thompson and Leon Van Rensburg. So they both get a win. The Phalanx is third for Joshua Sutherland. Magic Word for Greg Beckett was fourth. Always flying for David Hood was fifth. And then poor old Damaris Geezer there, you see, just trying to get a handicap mark. That chiseling Graham Clutterbuck is doing his Barney Curly bit. He's put that in there. He's going to get that knocked down to 95 and it'll go and walk an absolute hack up in a hunter next week. You watch.